Hello everybody. Now I'll discuss the second part of this non-conventional uh, process, manufacturing processes, material processing. So one of them is the colloidal processing and casting. Actually colloidal processing it basically is a nothing but that uh, having some slurry and there is a suspended solid within the liquid is there and somehow when consolidate that particular solid just removing the liquid from this thing following certain uh, procedure. So that is the basic approach associated with the colloidal processing uh, technology. So now thing is that what we can extract the water that means a liquid uh, from this mixture or from this slurry that is the one of this thing and based on that we see there is a process development that is called the slip casting process. So you can see the slip casting process usually we use the some kind of the porous medium, porous medium for example gypsum can be used as a mold material. So such that when you put the suspended this slurry, usually aqueous slurry we can use, we can put it aqueous slurry here in the mold and fill it up and then a certain layer of the thickness it will be consolidated in the certain layer of the thickness and the water will be passed through the porous medium uh, following the capillary action through this uh, porous structure. So once the fill the this aqueous slurry uh, containing basically the fine uh, clay, the, so, so that clear the slurry has having fine clay and which is known as the slip. So that's what is called the slip casting process. So one, one it is filled by this slurry, then after a certain time we just uh, drain out this thing remaining uh, slurry and few part of the slurry is basically deposited, the solid is deposited uh, over the surface and remaining the water will be passed through the porous medium. And then once it is done, then if we try, try if we dry it, then we get the, take it out from the uh, mold and we can dry also and we can reach the final product. So here, so is that uh, the excess slurry which is not required in this case that can be drained out, that can be reused also these things. but other cases also maybe we can look into that other way if we put for a longer time the slurry within this mold cavity then thickness can be bigger here you can see the uh, figure E. So here figure E the longer casting time will produce the cast having the thicker wall and if you further continue this thing it can be make a solid uh, structure uh, which is almost nearly solid cast is, is possible to form using this process. Now, this is the uh, simple way uh, we can construct the slip casting process but there is a we can accelerate this formation of this uh, component that means uh, time can be reduced. So what is the methods to increase the uh, this casting rate basically what we can increase the casting rate there are three different ways one is the pressure casting, vacuum assisted casting and the centrifugal casting these are the, the typical types of the this slip casting process where we can enhance the this casting rate. So here pressure casting we simply apply the pressure to the slurry such that this, uh, this water can be removed from, from the slurry very quickly. So that is the one way to enhance the, the casting rate and that is the vacuum assisted casting. In this cases we can use the apply a vacuum to the mold such that this creates the, some kind of the pressure differences and the extraction of this liquid uh, from through the porous material can be enhanced. So in that way it can in, increase the rate of the casting process. Other is the centrifugal casting using the centrifuging. So then we keep on rotation, rotating and then consolidating over the wall and that is also by forcefully basically enhance the, the extraction of the uh, liquid uh, from the slurry. So this way we can enhance uh, this uh, rate of this uh, slip casting process. Now we can find the application of this typical slip casting process is the dense refractory, very complex shape. So dense refractory is where with the very dense structure is required. Thin even if you want to produce the thin wall products also for example crucible, closed end tubes, large structural refractories. Here you can find out this application of the this uh, slip casting process. The steps we can the simply we can explain the steps. Steps mean first preparation of the slurry in the slip casting process, then verification of the slurry by screening. So by screening we can uh, verification of the slurry so that homogeneous mixture uh, can be formed. Then evacuation of air also from this mixture. Then we perform the mold filling operation and during the mold filling this casting is usually done and draining of the excess slurry from, uh, from the mold. And then after that we perform the partially drying 
while within the mold so within the mold so to bring some strength green strength we can partially uh, basically dry we, when this uh, layer is within the mold then after that we just separate out the uh, this uh, component from the mold and then uh, we can perform find the finishing operation some trimming operation okay, and perform and before the final drying of this component such that the liquid can be dried and it can consolidate and make a make the component so these are the basic steps associated with slip casting process also now we can uh, here procedure is completely uh, this graphically you can uh, we can explain this uh, process first with the liquid powder and uh, defluculant can be added together defluculant is basically the chemical that is try to separate out the liquid suspension so that means the liquid suspension cannot mix uh, in this thing and create some kind of the cluster kind of the uh, structure so that's why uh, this kind of the chemical agent is basically used along with the liquid and powder and mixed together then is basically preparation of the slip so once slip is done then we we can perform the mold preparation also done mold preparation has to be there as for the geometric shape of the component mold preparation is done then we put the this this uh, uh, this slurry within the mold and then slip casting is basically uh, perform the slim casting operation then once it is done the extra slurry can be draining out and then further stiffening of the this uh, deposited layer is performed then part removal after removal of the part we can perform the drying operation so drying and uh, during the drying operation densification can also be done so it's basically bisque firing can be utilized to dry this consolidated component and of course perform the machining operation to get the safe and after that once it is densification is done then we get the final machining operations to get the exact shape of the component so these are the basic steps of the slip casting process but in this case slurry is basically we are talking about the slurry but slurry is basically liquid plus solid uh, plus any processing additives can be used and uh, it can be but this can be a uh, uh, variety of the mixtures can be used in for example in case of the ball mills planar planetary ball mills and vibratory mills this mixture can be done now casting slurry is typically formulated to shear thinning to perform the shear thinning operations and apparent viscosity should be this one 2000 millipascal second and at a mold filling shear rate can go up to the per second 1 to 10 these are the typical parameters associated with the slip casting process now further fact associated with the slip casting process is that the density and apparent viscosity or i can say the ill stress of the slurry that should be very high in, in these cases because high enough to minimize the particle settling during the casting operation so this viscosity is relatively high then it, it, the settling times can be less that's why we usually put the viscosity is much more preamble molds for the casting are commonly gypsum is used because gypsum can create some kind of the porous structure and of course it is having 40 to 50 percent porosity is there and effective pore size can reach up to 1 to 5 micrometer so this Okay, uh, this helps the this absorption of the liquid from from the slurry so that's why we use the gypsum casting time can vary vary from few minutes for a very thin casting if you do and it can be partially coagulated by porcelain slurry could be about one hour to find out about the to get the thick porcelain cast so that means it can vary depending upon the type of the slurry also or the time can vary also or at mainly actually the slip casting process the time should uh, more sensitive to the what is the thickness of the component we are looking for in this case the dense solid cast fine particle size we can use the initially we can create the fine particle size to range up to the several weeks for thickness of 30 centimeter for example if you want to achieve the thickness of 30 centimeter then in that cases time can go up to the several weeks also so that range of the time is basically required in this case so that's why to one of the thing, conventional pro slip casting process uh, if we try to do perform the casting process without any external aid the time is basically rate of the casting process is very very slow so sometimes we can accelerate the rate of the casting process that uh, already one that uh, using some external aid for example the pressure casting process so we apply the pressure in this case just to enhance the casting rate so in this case that uh, in general the casting rate is and the depending upon the pressure differences of course the through the porous medium the capillary section of gypsum uh, this it can create about the pressure is less than 200 kilopascal but at external pressure 
can be utilized or suction can be utilized to ensure the driving to flow out the liquid through the uh, porous structure and that actually enhance the casting time. So, that is the purpose of using the pressure casting benefits. So, significantly reduces the casting time particularly thickness for example, 1 to 2 hours uh, to less than 20 minutes for a 1 centimeter uh, thick wall. So, in this case maybe initially it was 1 to 2 hours. So, so, that can be reduced to 20 minutes if you want to produce the 1 centimeter thick wall. So, that is the one way to enhance the casting that is casting rate. At the same time increase the cast thickness by a factor of 2 to 3. So, we can use the slurry pressure 1.5 mega Pascal pressure differences if we can create then it is possible to use this, uh, this thickness 2 to 3 times that, that particular uh, time. Even even the lowers the drying shrinkage. So, that is also another advantage of this pressure casting the drying shrinkage can be reduced from 3.35 percent to the 1 to 1.5 percent. So, that means shrinkage volume can be reduced uh, uh, in case of the this if we perform the pressure casting process. In this case the increasing casting pressure definitely reduces the cycle time, but at the same time that increase the cost to the mold material. So, that is the benefit, but the other side disadvantage is that it actually enhance the cost of the mold material and the equipment requirements can be much more in case of the pressure casting process. So, that is the one disadvantage we can say and high pressure slip casting it can go up to 4 mega Pascal is used basically for small volume production of the small shape. So, it can go up to 4 mega Pascal can be utilized and even for a, a very uh, small uh, volume production of the shape. So, these are the, the positive side and the negative sides of the pressure casting process. Now, slip casting, but if you perform in the vacuum casting process. So, if you create the vacuum, so in these cases uh, is the widely used the very porous refractory insulation. Uh, in, uh, in that cases, we can utilize the vacuum casting process and that is basically having very complex shapes. So, that is why this vacuum casting is very specifically for the porous refractory insulation if you want to create this kind of the structure is more suitable in case of the vacuum casting process. Thus, slurry is basically partially defluculent ceramic powder and the chopped refractory fiber also can be utilized here also in this in this case the slurry is more that thing because the fiber actually increases the viscosity and of course, it increases the liquid requirement and increases the porosity of the cast. So, that is why we can prepare the slurry uh, uh, the use, utilizing the fiber also because it helps to create this particular the porous refractory insulation structure and expandable permeable preform is coupled with the vacuum line also this mold and then it is submerged into the slurry. First it is coupled with the, the vacuum line and then after that it is basically submerged into the slurry and once up reach the desired wall thickness and this preform is basically withdrawn and actually removed for the drying and the chemical test. Once it is withdrawn and then after that it is removed the deposited part and then it is uh, performing the drying operation and the chemical set can be done. So, in this case the external surface of a porous mold may be subjected to a vacuum to effectively increase the casting. That is always true because we can use the uh, vacuum basically create the pressure differences that helps to uh, increasing the uh, casting rate. Now, similarly centrifugal casting also slip in another variant of the slip casting process with the external aid creating the this thing uh, uh, centrifugal force is basically helps to forming the advanced ceramics for example, very complex shapes and of course, in this cases we need a very high density structure. In that cases the centrifugal uh, casting is more appropriate, but in this case the this actually helps to increase the settling force. So, centrifuging enhance the particle settling with liquid displaced uh, to the top of the centrifugal cell. So, in that helps it creates the densification of the uh, particle. So, that is the one uh, reasons uh, for the centrifugal casting. Of course, dense packing of the spherical particles is also possible using this thing. It is a very close pack, pack sphere uh, can be created uh, the separated by the porous inter domain region. So, in this case basically this uh, even for the uh, using the spherical particles are very dense and the structure can be formed using the centrifugal forces. Increasing deficiency that is the basic purpose of using the centrifugal casting process also it basically increases the casting rate. So, high, higher centrifugal force speed 
faster the liquid can be cast here. So faster liquid can flow away from this deposition surface and we can create the dense structure or I can say that the rate of the casting can be enhanced using the uh, centrifugal casting operation. Now I will try to look into this thing coating and the tape casting process. So this is the our next uh, subtopic related to the coating and the tape casting process which is under the non-conventional material processing technologies. So here also because non-conventional material processing technology is basically mostly associated with the ceramic material. So here tip casting is basically special type of the coating process apart from the other non-conventional coating process. We will discuss later on about the our conventional coating process but this is tip casting is a very special type of the uh, coating process and in this case purpose of the tip casting is that to produce the very the ceramic sheet can be produced very thin ceramic sheet can be produced following the tape casting process and from the ceramic slurry. So, from the ceramic slurry we can create the uh, ceramic sheet. So, in this case we observe that whatever process we are following the in case of the ceramic we start with the ceramic powder actually and we make the slurry and from the slurry we basically carefully segregated the, uh, the powders in the different way different techniques and we can make the perform the different uh, manufacturing operation different component can be manufactured. So, in this case tape casting is basically mainly made for the very thin ceramic coating can be created. In this case dispersion containing the ceramic particles with polymer binder also there and that is also coated over a substrate and in this case liquid dispersion is deposited and then spread into the over the substrate and subsequently allow to solidify to make a very thin film. So, it is casted very thin layer and usually the flat surface and once it is done, once its deposition is done in that after that it is dried and if necessary you can perform the sintering operation also to make a very thin film. Tip casting is basically well known technique in case of the ceramic membrane production. So, in that area tip casting is very well known technology to perform the uh, ceramic or to produce the ceramic membrane. How it works? We can see that first use the very thin flexible green sheets of the ceramic composition is produced using the step casting process and in this case we start with the powder binder and plasticizer defluculants and the solvent all can be mix up uh, create this thing and with the mixing in the ball mill perform the mix mixing operation then de air so air can remove from the mixing try to perform the filtering and then depositing over the surface to create the uh, that means meant for the tape casting process. Tape casting process is the depositing over the surface to create the very thin layer of the ceramic component. When it is done, tape very thin film is formed and then perform the drying operation. So, these are the overall way to perform the tape casting operation. So, in this case we see already that the slurry is basically made for the defoliculant powders, binder and the plasticizer is used and then it is spread over a blade over a sheet and the it is basically create the uniform thickness to uh, using some kind of the blade basically blade use the over a uniform thickness and then it basically put over the carrier over the over the certain substrate this film is deposited and then once the green ceramic sheets are separated then the deposition are separated from this thing from the carrier and then after that it make into different sizes to get the final com component. So, here we can see the application the electronic conductors, resistors, capacitor materials these are actually printed using or printed in the form of a film using this step casting process and which is can be used in the electronic packaging system. Uh, this, this is the very step casting is very effective technology uh, to produce a very thin film structure. Now, even tip can be rolled to form a tube also and it can be laminated that several layers can be deposited and make a laminated structure also or I can say the multi-layer structure can also be produced using the uh, tape casting process. So, here we see the composition of the slurry. So, uh, if you look into focus composition of the slurry is basically inorganic powder is used in the tape casting process particle size around 1 to 5 micrometer and the specific surface area is basically 2 to 5 uh, meter square per gram. So, here particle size distribution is basically dictated by the uh, sintering consideration. So, particle size is basically the this uh, what can be the particle size that can be actually de decided by the uh, 
the what uh, the sintering condition is basically exist based on that we can choose the particle size and of course fine very fine powders they actually produce very smooth surface or even particle size the is the core structure it create the rough surface also over the thin film structure high homogeneity in the tf essential for the high quality structure of course very homogenization then very good mixing of the this particles is also required to perform the good quality uh, component or good quality surfaces also at the same time uniform shrinkage try to maintain prevention of the uh, coarse grain during the sintering operation that has to be looked into because during the sintering operation it is not like that that the during the uh, gro growth operation that it cannot create the very coarse grain structure also. So that is why we require the very fine powder is also required to perform with the uniform shrinkage and to prevent the this coarse grain formation during the sintering operation. Apart from this thing you can use the organic solvent can also used having the properties that promote very quick drying operation. So quick drying can also be possible. So accordingly we can use the organic solvent when you try to make the slurry in this particular case and minimizing the degradation of the uh, additives also. So that will help the solvent. So that is why the slurry preparation is also important uh, in this case to perform the to maintain the quality of the, the, the tape casting component. So here you can see some understanding the composition for the non-aqueous tape casting slurry. Basically we can see the function the powder is what type of solvent, defoculant, binder, plasticizer, weighting angle can also improve. We can see that composition is the alumina powder is usually used and we see solvent different type of solvent and there the volume percentage are used which get the optimum performance or good quality uh, cost structure also. Even we can see that if you use the different titanate uh, the, for the volume percentage uh, different powder solvent. So type of the you see alumina can be used the volume percentage can be 27 but if you the titanate the volume curve is, will be the 2.8 percent. So it is obvious that uh, we can utilize the depending upon the compositions the ratio is very important actually and this can be find out after a lot of trials to perform this uh, tape casting operation. Now tape casting machines so how it works basically tape casting process we can see that the powder concentration and viscosity of the slurry feed must be control well controlled. So to maintain the slurry and the uh, this thing the powder concentration or to maintain the viscosity uh, this uh, the slurry feed has to be controlled. So we prepare the slurry first and put the slurry here and the, this is the carrier tape carrier basically we can the thin film carrier is use it we can it is rotating this way the carrier in the film over which the slurry is deposited and we can use some, some controller to just to uh, keep movement we can control the thickness of the deposited slurry over the tape basically. So over the tape so by uh, this controlling this movement of this thing we can control the thickness one is liquid thickness is then I can move this direction which is enter the drying chamber we can see the heated inlet air is there and this is the outlet is there saturated air is there. So that air is basically heat the this the slurry over this thing and once it is done we can collect the dry tape we can fold it we can collect the dry tape. So this is the very simple configuration of the tape casting machine. So here we can see the what are the different factor aspects associated with the tape casting process. One is the temperature of the slurry should be controlled above the highest ambient value expected. So above the highest ambient value expected because in this cases we can create more saturated air drying will be more effective the using the air dry operation. So tape carrier uh, can may be coated. So this tip this is we can say this is tape. So this tip can can be coated such that it will be easy to remove the separate the deposited this uh, component. So basically deposited uh, component here and the release of the tape. So it is helps to so that is why uh, this the step carrier is basically the coating so that very easily we can remove the deposited layer uh, from this step. The, Thickness of the tape varies directly with the height of the blade. So tape means I am talking about the tape means is this one the what is the deposited layer of the this slurry. So in this case the thickness of the tape can vary depending upon the height of the blade. So just adjusting the height of the blade we can simply control the thickness of the tape. Now other part of the slurry the high slurry viscosity and the velocity exceeding about 0.2 centimeter square 
are desired for the thickness uniformity. So basically, if the slurry, very high slurry viscosity you are using here and velocity should be more than 0 0.5 centimeter per second, in that cases, the, it is uh, possible to maintain the uh, uniformity in the thickness. So actually, the viscosity is very important parameter here. So viscosity can decide what can be the optimum uh, parameter or optimum the velocity or uh, the other parameters can be decided based on the viscosity of the slurry prepared. So that is why it is very important parameter to be controlled also during this process. Casting machine can go up to 25 meter length and width can be several meter and speed can go up to 1500 millimeter per minute which is basically used in the con uh, industrial process. But tape thickness can go up to 25 to 1250 micrometer. There is a wide range of the tape thickness can also be possible to produce using the tape casting process. Now tape casting machines we try to focus on the drying operation what a drying can be done. In this case the viscoelastic tape is formed. So the viscoelastic tape is formed means the slurry after drying the air. So, thus this, this the viscoelastic uh, elasticity is there. So, as the slurry moves through a drying tunnel and the solvent is basically vaporization. So, when solvent vaporization, the viscosity is basically increases. So, it finally reach is finally reached to the as a viscoelastic material. In this case, addition to the carrier that should be sufficient to prevent the curling also. So, I mean to say that when you perform the drying operation. So, in perform in such way that uh, this carrier should not be the curl during this drying operation. So, that should be so attachment should be there with the carrier such that it should prevent the curling during the drying operation. But at the same time, it should not also avoid the eventual separations uh, from the carrier. So, temperature must be controlled and usually keep the below the boiling point of the solvent system. So, that, uh, that way the temperature is controlled. And of course, capillary force transport the liquid to the drying surface. It is also there. Capillary force is try to the transport the liquid from the to the surface. So therefore, shrinkage occurs at the solvent is loss. Of course, solvent is loss from the slurry. Then it expected there might be some kind of the shrinkage is there. So uh, at the same time, when the solvent is lost, more particles comes to the close together, and it also affecting affecting the thickness of the tape. So we have to be carefully control uh, this thing that calculations must be done the, because solvent is lost then of course this modify this alter the, the thickness of the component. At the same time there might be another problem that during the drying of the segregation of the particles should not occur or there might not be organic phases should not occur during the uh, drying phase so should not create some kind of the organic phase during the drying operation that has to be looked into. Even this once it is uh, viscoelastic step becomes more elastic as the drying continues. So, we can perform the more drying operation. So, viscoelastic is gradually becomes more elastic, try to convert it to the elastic material. Particle fraction of the particles in the dry tape is around 50 to 60 percent is the usually the particle fraction is which is uh, optimum uh, frac volume fraction of the particles and dry tape can be used directly uh, or it can be create some kind of the reel also using the dry tape or we can make it the cut as for the size or shape of the uh, component. So, these are the typical uh, aspect associated with the drying operation in the tape casting process. Now, I will try to discuss about the coating process. So, once the of course, we already discussed the, uh, the step casting is one type of the coating or the ceramic coating process, but we will try to look into the other, other coating process also. So, for example, first we will look into the overview of the ceramic coating process. So, this few facts also important to understand the overall view of the ceramic coating process. One is that ceramic coating process is extensively used for the surface modification, mostly surface modification we can utilize the ceramic coating operations. So, it is mainly used to prevent the oxidation and corrosion also to prevent the surface from the oxidation and corrosion we usually perform the this ceramic coating process. But at the same time, it also minimize the wear damage for that purposes also we can perform the, we can put the ceramic coating on the surface also. Now actually ceramic coating creates the hydrophobic surface such that any kind of the contaminants are just a kicked off uh, this thing, uh, contaminants of paint makes it easier to clean the cars also. You can see the, you see the hydro phobic surface if the this by putting the coating 
the ceramic coating will create this thing it will helps to just to the easier to clean on the surface in case of the car also uh, car body surface and of course try to reach very better finish uh, if you create this thing and even fading also that means oxidation even chemical stains and the itch marks can also be uh, this avoided if you create the hydrophobic surface using the ceramic co uh, ceramic coating so that is the practical application of the ceramic coating various techniques like the this we are talking about the ceramic uh, coating but say tape casting is the one type of the coating process but in this uh, ceramic coating is the can be used the different techniques for example the techniques can be or technologies can be the vapor deposition technique chemical and electrochemical deposition thermal spraying sol gel uh, atomic layer deposition and the solution immersion these are the different techniques is associated with the to deposit to create the ceramic coating ceramic coating also of course application in case of the architecture marine industry aerospace and the biomedicine in this particular field we can find out the lots of application of the ceramic coating here advantage is that ceramic coating is usually cost is low preparation is very simple corrosion and the wear resistance properties can be easily imparted using the ceramic thermal stability can be very high associated with the ceramic coating mechanical durability is also high and the even some uh, ceramics are also by compatibility also so you see that there are so many uh, advantages associated with the ceramic coating process similarly we can get some overview of the polymer coating also in this case the polymer coating also having very good shielding effect so that is the main purpose of using this uh, polymer coating it basically protect the metal substrates and having very high flexibility of the uh, polymer coating the traditional technique for the polymer this materials using the polyurethane coatings epoxy coatings acrylic coatings these are the we can see different varieties of the uh, polymer traditional polymer coating system we can find out so this polymer coating is mainly used for the to protect the metallic surfaces also in that cases with the polymer coating but polymer coatings can also be functional specific functional can be imparted using the polymer coating process for example the adhesives photographic film and the protective uh, and putting some anti corrosions or some kind of the decorative features can be associated with the uh, polymer coatings also even they can use the for modify the surfaces for example paper coating hydrophobic coatings they actually try to modify the uh, surface behavior using this uh, polymer so we can see there is a lots of uh, applications area associated with the polymer coating process but usually polymer coatings are mostly organic but there might be uh, this polymer coating can be mixed with the the ceramic or the metal particles can be utilized mixed with the polymer coating also that actually increase the durability functional uh, functionality can be improved even some point we can bring the aesthetic part also in a component using the mixing of the ceramics and metal with the polymer coating also but polymer coating is typically order of thickness can be vary from 1 mill micrometer to 100 micrometer thickness in that range polymer coatings can vary but the what are the techniques where you can deposit create the polymer coating for example the blade coating spray coating thermal spray coating pulse laser deposition plasma polymerization flow coating spin coating sol gel dip coating and the grafting these are the actually techniques associated with the uh, the formation of the uh, polymer coating over the surfaces so we'll try to discuss the few of the methods uh, which is common uh, the which is the technique common techniques associated with the polymer or ceramic materials but these techniques we'll try to discuss in details now here we can see the overall see that basically we say we are coating process also sometimes we say no the printing also that means creating this printing and the coating process so the basically two different categories of the printing and the coating process can be described one is the thick film uh, printing printing process another is the thin film printing or coating process so thick film printing process one is the technology is the screen printing process so screen printing process is basically printing is basically very thick film conductors thick film resistors dielectrics and the electronic substrate we can find out the very thick film uh, printing process which is under the screen printing process so here we use the applying for the decorative film uh, on tiles also so in the we can the screen printing process we can utilize decorative film for tiles 
some kind of the institutional where various household ceramic products can be uh, can be printed using the screen printing process and uh, this is the one process screen printing process to produce the very thick film other is the pair transfer printing process and the transfer decals this also utilized for the printing on the flat or contoured surface this is another techniques for the thin film printing that is known as the pad transfer process so these are a thick film uh, printing process there is a thin film also printing process or coating process one is the sol gel coating process then thermal and the plasma spray process and the electrophoretic electrophoretic coatings also these are the different types of the coatings process we can utilize for the to create the very thin film uh, over the structure over the substrate now screen printing process in screen printing process we can use the open pattern in the stencils so open pattern stencils uh, screen can be defines the printed pattern so we can use some kind of the template open uh, template and the that uh, screening through the template we can create the uh, first we can create the pattern all then thick paste is forced through the stencil screen that is basically through the template screen the paste is forced through it so through this thing uh, the basically uh, in in these cases uh, onto the surface using the uh, squeezing speed uh, squeezing space basically and the nozzle assembly so we can just pass uh, this paste through the uh, uh, over the template uh, through some screening uh, surface uh, through the skinning surface is basically skin surface we just basically squeeze the space and passes through it and that actually using some kind of squeezer uh, squeezy or squeezy and nozzle system also so here the equipment and paste compositions have print thickness of around 2 to 5 micrometer is possible and the print pattern can size can be 15 to by 15 centimeter a uh, line width can as small as 0 0.25 millimeter uh, this thing and squeeze squeegee speeds can go up to 25 mil, uh, centimeter uh, per second and the cycle time can go about around 2 second uh, these are the typical parameter or uh, this uh, understanding of uh, this physical dimension of the this equipment associated with the screen printing process so first we need to create the some kind of the paste so paste composition is basically can be the primary can be the metal or ceramic powder or it can be uh, uh, this powder sintering aid for example the lead borosilicate feet that can be uh, used uh, the powder sintering that actually uh, this basically aided the sintering process and then organic liquid of low volatility so uh, organic liquid we can utilize here so uh, that means the it's a the quickly uh, can volatile this organic liquid and high molecular weight binder can be mixed also and even there might be some kind of the other additives for example lubricant can also be used so all combining this thing we can create the paste first so once the paste this including the this basically paste is created just to along the this thing the main component is the powder that try to binding the powder uh, in the form of a paste then powders are typically finer around 10 micrometer size and basically it actually require very good uh, mill operation to reach this very fine particles of the 10 micrometer uh, size and at the same time homogeneous uh, mix mixture is there or dispersion of the powder particles is also required so that can be homogeneously it can be done then stencil pattern is basically this uh, template pattern produced using the photosensitive emulsion applied to stretch in layers so that is sensitive uh, in the the photosensitive emulsion here you can play the role which is applied and it actually stretch in the layer and once the emulsion exposed to the photographic positive or printing image and then exposed area uh, becomes hardened so which the photosensitive part is there which cases the uh, photosensitive part which is sensitive that part is basically hardened uh, this this powder uh, that means uh, paste actually hardened and the unexposed areas basically washed away and we can get the exact size of the uh, this uh, component or the basically shape of the uh, component so in this case 
exposure intensity and the time must be carefully controlled for accurate tensile. So, that is also very important. So, the properties finally, this property is whether brittleness of, of the component is actually depend on the exposure time. So, exposure time is very much sensitive and what is the intensity of the exposure that is also important in this case to produce the component. For example, here the screen printing is the labeling and the merging of the screen printed paste is basically the squeezy we can get the different thickness screen printing and the very thick film and over the substrate and we can very thick film can be created over after we can put the labeling we can create the uh, this uniform layer of this thing. And in this case, we can see uh, that parameters in the screen printing process. We can see here uh, this um, screen tension we apply here, and the space is basically passes through it, and uh, so in the squeezy here, and the stand of distance attack of angle, and we put the printed film such that through the uh, screen, uh, this thing uh, we can see the emulsion, this photographic positive, the exposed area are hardened. In this case, uh, to make the desired shape. So, these are the exposed area can be hardened and uh, in this cases the uh, this we apply some kind of the screen tension also. So, screen tension we can put it to make the uniformity in the this the uh, layer of the this paste. Screen printing the screen frames must be dimensionally stable of course, the frames must be dimensionally stable. Fabric must be regular wave elastic and abrasion resistance. So, fabric must be regular so that it can be able to elastical we can we can create some kind of strain over the surface. Common fabrics are the monofilament, nylon, polyester, stainless steel uh, and the metallized polyester filament can be utilized as the common fabrics in, in the, the screen printing process. And polyester is actually used for the precise uh, registration, stainless steel for use the abrasive of the thermo. Uh, plastic paste on the flat surface. So, basically we can use uh, this kind of the this uh, common fabrics uh, stainless steel for the abrasive or the thermoplastic paste on the uh, flat surface we can utilize the stainless steel. Now, printed paste thickness it can go up to 60 to 80 micrometer on contact and even 20 to 30 micrometer after merging and after drying. So, initially you can create the 60 to 80 micrometer on contact and after basically merging and the drying it can reach up to 20 to 30 micrometer in the layer. So, uniform uh, squeegee pressure required for the uniform print we can say that for the the pressure can be uniform in this case to bring the uniform uh, print. But in this cases also associated with some kind of the defects for example, voids, spin holes, entrapped air, um, clogged skin aperture these are the typical defects associated with the screen printing process. Now, if we perform the uniform print thickness achieved with the parallel squeeze stroke in that cases uniform print thickness uh, thickness can be achieved even control hardness and the pressure on the uh, squeezy should be the uniform to bring the good quality printed component. So, sometimes the control peel and the finer filament diameter with the larger opening required for the printing of the fine lines of the uh, component. But in this case surface roughness in the in the paste transfer and the addition, but excessive roughness leads to the unacceptable coating thickness. So, that is also the surface roughness is basically adds to the transfer of the thing, thing. and excessive rough, roughness is there in the surface excessive rough in that cases the coating thickness may not be able to the the uniform thickness we will be able to achieve. So, these are the typical problem associated with the screen printing process. There is another uh, process that is called the pad transfer printing process. In this cases, we can pad transfer printing is works more on the very thin film uh, to produce a very thin film structure. So, pad transfer printing is basically used for the decorating the surface of the various shapes and the texture. So, if you see the decorated surface or the various shapes and the texture if you want to create in that case is the pad transfer printing is the one of the important process. So, in this cases using this process also we can perform the multicolor the print multicolor, but without performing the drying operations also. So, without means that not intermediate drying operation may not be required uh, in case of the multicolor print using the pad transfer printing process. So, here in this case the ink in the recesses of en engraved plate 
So, ink is there in the engraved place is in and that actually transferred to the pad, the rubber pad usually and the from the rubber pad first it contacts with the plate and then to the surface. So, when it is from the rubber pad to it basically transferred to the surface. So, even this is the pad transfer is the one type of the printing process which is can be used for the irregularly shape component substructure substrate for the irregular shape substrates we can utilize the pad transfer printing process also in this case image is transferred from a metal or plastic photo engraved plate to an intermediate the silicon rubber pad and ultimately to the substrate so in this case how it happens this even there is a irregular shape also that irregular shape is basically first it transferred to the silicon rubber pad and from the silicon rubber pad it transferred to the substrate. So that is also possible in this case it is not necessary the always we can create using a pad transfer is the uniform thickness. So non uniform thickness can also be performed. So from this figure you can easily understand this thing for example this is the uh, pad. So this is the this uh, color is photo engraved plate is color is there. So, when the pad is in contact with this thing, we can pick up the color with the pad. The color is attached with the pad in this case and the pad picks up the uh, tacky surfaces of the of the ink, basically touch surfaces of the ink, the, it transfer to the pad. So, now solvent basically evaporate here from the pad and this when it is there solvent is evaporated and the ink, uh, ink as the um, ink is remains within the pad also. Then this pad is in a transfer over the substrate. So, once this, this is the substrate. So, once it is transferred to the substrate, so this similar layer will be transferred to the substrate. So, this way uh, it works. So, now it depends when it is a non regular shape, it depends on the what we can design the this, the how flexible is the pad. So, design of the pad is very important in this particular process to get the very thin film transfer uh, from one uh, this uh, engraved plate to a the substrate material. So, this way it works this uh, pad transfer printing process. So, pad transfer printing in this case the photo engraved plates are made by coating of the lab tool steel with the photo sensitive etching resist. Uh, in this case the photo engraved plate is prepared first in this cases and then place is exposed using a film positive and in this case etching each can be a depth of the up to 30 to 60 micrometer depth the each can be there when it is created the uh, in this case the photo plates are exposed to the exposed to the uh, film positive. In this case most pad are made of basically silicon rubber and the which is used for the photo uh, pad printing operation and are less viscous there and the dry more slowly than those used in the screen printing process. So, in this case inks is basically the is the less viscous and it that is why the low viscosity and of course, it will take the large time for, to dry the, or, or I mean to say the dry can be very slowly and this type of liquid is basically used, ink is used in case of the pad transfer printing which is different from the screen printing process. So, definitely inks must have the some affinity with the pad transfer uh, the rubber pad and of course, it is a greater affinity to the uh, surface of course, when it rubber pad there is affinity but more affinity over the substrate where we finally transfer to the this ink to the substrate. The plate is flooded for initially with the ink using a sponge is basically first the plate is flooded ink using the sponge and then the pad is contact with the, the plate for a specific time and then it rise take it out and this plate is basically flooded with ink again uh, as the pad transition to the printing surface. So, in this case is the the uh, this engraved plate where we put the ink and then we keep on contact with the pad with the this plate and the ink will transfer to the pad gradually. So, it depends on the this pad this the how much time is the specific time is in contact with the with the plate. So, that is why it depends uh, uh, transferring most or all of the ink is happening to the pad. So, in this case the cycle time can be 2 seconds and the image size can go up to 15 by 15 centimeter in that range in, in, in this way. So, here uh, this pad transfer printing is basically works in this way. There is another coating process that is called the sol gel coating process. So, sol gel coating process is basically the wet chemical process. You see that this is sol gel is the wet chemical process and of course, it basically in, involved in the formation of the inorganic. Uh, colloidal suspension that is known as the sol and gelation of the sol 
in the continuous liquid phase and that is known as the gel. So, that is why in this case the precursor for synthesizing the colloidal salt which is basically used to uh, create the or which consists of the organometallic compounds and of course, organometallic compounds at the same time there must be some kind of the reactive groups along with the organometallic compound such that it can synthesize the colloidal uh, so, uh, salts. Once it is done, uh, then uh, we can utilize for the uh, processing. So, in this case the metal alloxide sins can be utilized uh, these things for example, this aluminates, titanates, zirconates, borates are the most used the, uh, this is the most used in the sol gel process. So, this kind of the this metal oxide is basically utilized in case of the sol gel process. So, in this case sol gel process can be in the form of a very thin film particles, uh, fibers, aerogels and the dense materials at the micro and nano scale following the heat treatment operation. Actually, this solution is the colloidal solution uh, can be in the different way, it can be different form it can it can exist in the form of a film, in the form of a particles, in the form of a fibers, in the form of aerosol, uh, aerogels and this way it can form also. So, solgest products are initially amorphous initially and the, so that if we from amorphous if you try to transfer to the crystalline structure, solgest uh, that can be achieved using the appropriate heat treatment. So, if you perform the heat treatment, so it basically amorphous solgest can be transferred to the crystalline structure. The range of the application of the sol gel dry products is basically aerospace industry and that actually till it continuously expanding the application of the sol gel metal in the aerospace industry that finally, because it is very uh, resulting good strength, density and the uh, chemical inertness is possible to produce using the sol gel potential. So, one of the largest aircraft applications in the thin film coating on various alloy surfaces is the this uh, can be produced by the spin coating, spray coating, roll casting, electrophoresis and the dipping uh, and the dipping these are the this uh, process. But in this case the sol gel can be one of the important uh, you can find out the uh, application for the aircraft industry. So, employing this particular sol gel method to coating is basically it actually try to replace the highly toxic chromium conversion coating on the aluminum alloy. So, that is why the sol gel method is mostly used uh, for that purposes is just try to replace the, the other methods because of the highly toxic chromium is produced in the uh, over the aluminum alloy surface. So, therefore, generally the surface treatments using the sol gel process is basically improves the corrosion resistance can be improved because it can create the oxide layer also on the surface of the alloy and it creates some protective film also which acts as a barrier against oxygen diffusion to the metal surface. So, basically it is actually acts as a barrier for the oxygen diffusion in case of the metal surface. So, for that purposes sol gel method is the important techniques which is can be utilized in case of the this uh, the aircraft industry we can use uh, this particular coating process. So, here the sol gel process we can use the technology can be used for the coating ceramics can be for coating ceramics the sol gel method can be used also. So, in this cases for example, the overall chemistry for the forming titanium oxide is something like that. We use the um, TiO4H2O titanium oxide and 4 over. So, here you can produce the titanium oxide. So, the technique used for applying the sol gel coatings is basically the techniques for the sol gel method for dipping, draining, spinning and the spraying the way to first we create the sol gel and that is a, the sol gel is basically the different techniques is used to create the coating over the surfaces. So, we see the pressurized salt here through the nozzle and spray over the surface and this sometimes we can use the uh, it is you know the uh, spin coating operation. So, we basically uh, spinning that means rotating the this substrate over which the this some layer will be created and once it is done we take the substrate and separate or the film or we can keep it as well. So, that, that can be done also after drying operation here also you can perform the uh, drying process also. So, here the when sol gel is created and that if we dipping action can be produced the uniform fire coatings of about 100 uh, millimeter in thickness on the non porous surface. So, in this case the dipping can also be done to produce the uniform uh, 
thickness is of the coatings is possible in case of the dipping process. In case of the drain coating process is the variation in which the substrate is basically stationary and the salt vessel is raised and lower. So, it is basically substrate drain coating, substrate is stationary, we basically fill it with the salt gel and then we drain it out. This way we can use the drain coating process. Spin coating process is that use the coat with the substrate shown already in the figure. So, try to rotate it uh, and then it creates the uh, this uh, very thin film over the uh, surface. Here the solution drips onto the center of the substrate at about 3 to 4 hertz and solution may be spread onto the surface during the rotating of the surface. So, this way we can apply the sol gel method to create the coating over the uh, surface, different type of the surface and here you can see the different processes, dipping can be done also draining can be done also or even spinning can be done or even simply spraying can also be done over the surface. All this methodology can be applied for the sol gel method. Now, electrophoretic and the electrostatic coating, this is the another uh, coating process. So, in this case is the electrophoretic, in this case a conductive surface is required and that can be coated using the electrophoretic and basically or electrostatic techniques. Both way the, the material must be the uh, conductive material, conductivity of the electricity must be there. So, electrophoretic means basically electrophoresis is basically techniques that actually separates the substances using an electric current. So, basically it separates the substances from the electric current and makes the deposit over the surface to create some kind of the coating over the surface. So, that is the basic principle associated with the electrophoretic coating process. So, in this case advantage is that high degree of thickness uniformity is possible. So, uniform thickness is possible bring to very smoothness and good coverage of the safe edge. So, along the edge also even over the edge it is possible to produce some kind of uniform thickness deposition of the coating is possible and even there is a drill surface also within the drill surface also this type of coating is very effective or if there is a small cavity and within the cavity we perform the very thin film coating also in that case the electro or the electrostatic coating is the one of the option for that. Electrophoretic deposition in this case we started with the slurry containing about the 25 percent volume percentage of the powder and of course along with the other additives for example well de de defluculated to provide the maximum particle mobility also there. So, we create the for the slurry which is the main 25 percent powder is there. Uh, in this case is the powder is well dispersed and extremely fine to minimize the settling. So, that means the powder particle should be extremely fine so that the settling will be good or smoothness can be bring. And in this case is the for aqua slurry the substance is normally put in the anode side and other part we put in the, the cathode side the this thing the aqueous, the substance is on the anode and this between the anode and uh, cathode we can create the, uh, the passing of the uh, electrophoretic action such that this metals, uh, this coating will be deposited over the conductive surface. Similarly, electrostatic application is also widely used for the applying the applying the paint and the enamels on the metal. Over the metal paint or enamels, we can use the this electrostatic application. It is also dry process. Powder is suspended in air is basically is pumped through a powder gun. So in this cases, uh, powder gun and which is where the iron bombardment uh, the through the ion bombardment action and along with the it basically ion bombardment charge the particles and that particles is basically passes using the some kind of the gun and this is the spread over the surface. So, here charge particles basically somehow we make the charge the particles. So, charge particles is basically accelerated on the, on the surface and the grounded over the surface that actually form over the surface a coating. So, basically this charge particle is attracted over the surface of the uh, coating. So, in this case the electrostatic spraying we need to apply around 100 kilo volt is applied uh, in this case and which is the once it is done in the spray through the nozzle also the charge droplets is formed which is attracted to the grounded uh, substrate. So, basically charge particle helps to very controlled way it is the, the basically attached to the over the surface this and it is a very small position uh, this uh, this charge particles can be projected on over the surface. So, that is the electrostatic application that is how we can use the most of the modern card printing we can find out the electrostatic application of the of the of create the coating over the 
body also now there is another type of the coating that is called the printing and the coating process one is the thermal and the plasma sp spraying which is more commonly the coating process also so here you can see that uh, in this case the in in case of the thermal of the plasma spraying uh, operation the fine powder is basically melted in a flame and that is deposited on a already prepared uh, substrate in which is known as the thermal spraying operation so basically the first the particles are melted and it is sprayed over the surface or deposited over the surface that is known as the thermal spraying operation but plasma spraying is little different in this case the plasma is basically created at a cathode tip uh, with the basically and the that actually helps to thermionic emissions uh, from an inert gas and that basically use the is basically creates the uh, plasma in this cases and with the application of the uh, this uh, plasma and uh, this plasma generation is there so this plasma generation along with the supply of the powder then powder is basically uh, deposited accelerated by the this plasma and deposited over the surface is the powder particle is basically molten by the plasma and actually at the same time it is actually freeze when it is basically impacting over the surface or the when it is impacting over the surface so in this case is the uh, non oxidizing gas we usually use for example hydrogen argon helium is basically non oxidizing gas are using and in this case and uh, such that to create the plasma also and uh, metallic powder are also used so in this case application is the refractory thermal barrier coatings create the metal coatings on ceramics even we can use the wear resistant coatings of the borides and carbides these are the typical application of the uh, thermal or the plasma spring operation so here you can see the hypersonic flame spring torch assembly so here we see that all the ones how it works is the plasma spring uh, operation we can see that in this case is the powder injector is there the powder and the carrier gas either there is a supply of the powder and the carrier gas is there and here you can see that uh, this water cooling combustion ports is also there in this case and this the water cooling here the here is also combustion chamber and we supply the oxygen and the main fuel hydrogen uh, can be utilized here and the, the supply here the create this thing just to create the this uh, plasma here so here powder injected and it is the nozzle is the, uh, here these are component also nozzle and this is the hypersonic equipment so hypersonic is the create the flame here and uh, the flame and that actually this powder is basically melt and projected by using this flame and over the projected over the surface to create the uh, coating operation now torch heating produces the temperature several times the melting temperature of the particles so we see the this case is the torch they create the temperature which is much more than that of the temperature of the uh, particles now once the molten particles is formed and that actually the projected the flatten on the impact over the surface and they clear the very thin forming the thin splat formation over the surface is there so actually over the surface it's a very thin film the splat is basically uh, created over uh, over the surface by by this molten uh, this thing particles now once is the freeze it cool the spat freeze it, this actually freeze very rapidly and basically adhering to the surface irregularity on the each other so very rapidly it freeze it and the whatever irregularity it actually it can retain irregularities so one uh, cool splat is freeze and then it creates this shape so similarly the impact and solidification of the splat form a laminar coating structure a lamellar coating structure so basically impact or this lamellar coating structure over the spat so lamellar coating is basically this type of layer we can say lamellar structure can be formed so such that average coating roughness is basically proportional to the particle size of the, uh, into the feed so here surface roughness entirely depends on the particle size you are creating using this uh, thermal uh, plasma spraying operation and of course it depends on the coating porosity it depends only on the mainly on the particle size but in this case the coating porosity can range from 5 to 20 percent and even even it can be more if the splats are par partially molten so if the splats are partially molten in that cases uh, in that cases the porosity can be very high in in case of the thermal and the plasma spring operation so here you can see that 
although this the thermal and the plasma spraying operation there is a huge application this thing so in this case uh, we use directly the melting this thing we can create the so from using some torch we can create the this uh, melt the powder and it's a uh, it's basically uh, depositing over the surface that is called the thermal spring of uh, thermal coating operations or plasma spring means we can use the we use the plasma instead of uh, directly uh, melting this using some torch so rather we create the plasma and that plasma is basically this uh, create uh, this projected uh, this powder particles and thus melt the powder particles and project over the the surface so this way we can the there are differences between the thermal and the uh, plasma spring operation uh, that's all in this cases i have tried to explain the different type of the uh, coating processes and which is uh, under the non conventional metal processing process but of course in conventionally there are so many other types of the coating process we have not discussed uh, in this cases here we try to focus on the only the non conventional coating operations so thank you very much for your kind attention mm -hmm.